in organometallic chemistry and specifically in the chemistry of organo transition metals, there's a type of reaction called an oxidative addition in which two fragments that used to be bonded to each other come apart and bond instead individually to a transition metal. And when that happens, the oxidation state of the metal, the charge on the metal, uh, increases by two. Reductive elimination is just the microscopic reverse. It's the opposite reaction where two individual fragments on a transition metal come apart from the metal and bond to each other instead. And the oxidation state of the metal goes down by two. So we're gonna take a look at a little bit more detail at how this happens. So there are two possible mechanisms of reaction that happen here. In one case, sometimes called the polar oxidative addition, there's a stepwise addition of an electrophile and a leaving group to the metal. So if we have HCl, for instance, adding to a transition metal, the proton is obviously an electrophile. And so the bond between the metal and the hydrogen has to come from the metal. So there's a displacement of the chloride ligand to form this metal hydride. And of course, we thought of that before as a proton because of the polarity of that bond. But once the hydrogen is on the metal, we really think of that as a hydride. It's H minus now. So if we've taken H minus, and it's bound to this metal, and there's an overall plus charge at this point, the metal must be plus two. So there's been a change in the oxidation state of the metal just by protonating it. So a protonation is an oxidative addition. But the reaction, as we saw on the previous slide, isn't complete yet because now we have this anion and this cation, and the next step is just a rebound. Those two ions collapse together to add both fragments onto the transition metal. So that is what can happen when there's a uh, polar material that's going to react with the transition metal. It's sort of like an SN2 reaction. If instead we have something that is incapable of undergoing an SN2 reaction, something that, for instance, doesn't have a polar bond like H2, oxidative addition still occurs in those cases but it can't do, uh, undergo the same kind of um, ionization step that we had before. Now, in, in, these, in these reactions, there's probably still uh, an initial binding step where uh, we get a weak donation of a sigma bond to the metal. But once this compound is bound to the metal and close enough to the D electrons, we can get back donation into the sigma star orbital and back donation is going to break that bond. And so that then we get two hydrides attached to the metal center. And again, the metal oxidation state goes up by two. Now in both of these cases, the mechanism for the reverse reaction, the reductive elimination is just following the same pathway, the same intermediates, but going from right to left.